All right, with that being said, we're going to hop on to our how to win with your moms here. I'm going to go ahead and introduce our three moms. If you want to head up top and hit speaker view, um, and then if everybody can mute themselves, that would be fantastic. Um, there's always, with speaker view, how it works at this point, I think everybody knows this, but whoever's talking, the, it, that kind of pops up. So if you were on our call last time, when our very beloved Kale was running by the train tracks and the train horn went off, we all got to see Kale. So sorry, Kale, to throw you on blast, but sometimes it has to be done. So um, go ahead and click speaker view up top. That'll throw whoever is speaking on. It's a beautiful thing. And I'm going to go ahead and introduce our three lovely women. And they are going to tell you if you could give me um, your name uh, and how many kids you have. And then I'm going to start you off with your first question. And that first question is, what was your relationship with your mom like growing up? Um, and yeah, maybe maybe even an update on like, where is it at today? So um, let's start with Miss Tracy Moss. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. I have two girls and there are 16 years in between them. So when one was just about getting ready to get her driver's license, I had the other one and I now have three grandbabies as well. And my relationship with my mom was um, very uh, amiable in high school, but she didn't ask a lot of questions. It's not until later I, be, I would say that I became really close to my mom and had a great relationship. It wasn't bad in high school. It just we didn't do a lot. I was a very active kid and I had two jobs and I was in band and yes, I was a band geek. And um, so, you know, we just didn't talk a whole lot, but it was, it was an okay relationship, but she was one of my very best friends before she went to, um, to be with Jesus and now she's in heaven. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Tracy. Um, yep. Tracy is, you're one of our campus pastors over on the Carlsbad campus. Uh, yeah. You did a uh, fireside chats with us, right? Mm -hmm. And and so, Correct. good friend of the nine ten community. And thank you so much for being here tonight. We're excited to. Yes, you. I love your program. Heck yeah, love it. Okay, yeah. very next, I'm going to introduce um, Mary Bishop on here. And so, Mary, we get to work together at church. Uh, your husband was on in the How to Win with Your Dads. And uh, yeah, Mary, why don't you tell us how long you've been married, how many kids do you have, and then what's your relationship with your mom, or what was it like when you were growing up, and what's it like now? Sure. Uh, so we've got two kiddos, 15 and 17, boy and girl, and um, the question, oh, I mean, we've been married 23 years now, so, um, and then my relationship with my mom was, we was fine in high school. I kind of, um, as Tracy was speaking, I, I read with her. We were friendly. I remember, you know, there's always that power struggle a little bit where I'm trying to grow up and be independent and they were kind of pulling me back a little bit. Um, but, and I think as I got older, I would reach out more and lean on them and start to ask questions and wanted to hang out more often with them after college and such. Um, and so, yeah, still, but, but kind of same thing with, um, it, they're from a different generation. My parents are also, um, I'm first generation born here in the United States. They're both from Hungary. And so the, their um, kind of the attitude was really, it wasn't really conversation. It was more, you know, I'd, I'll tell you what to do and what and follow directions. So I didn't really have a chance to, uh, well, I, I didn't really feel like I could go to them and ask questions if I needed to, or if I needed, if I had something going on. Mm. Mm. That makes sense. Awesome. Well, so stoked to have you on here tonight, Mary, and definitely excited to learn from you. Last but definitely not least, um, Mrs. Elizabeth Payne, actually my mom. Um, and I, I love that I get to bring my mom on for things. And yeah, friend to 910 has shared so much wisdom with our students, also with our leaders, and obviously to me for so much of my life, um, Paige and I. And so yeah, mom, how long have you been married? How many kids do you have? Uh, and uh, what was your relationship with your mom like growing up and what's it like today? Uh-oh. Been married almost 34 years. Um, have eight kids if I count all my outlaw kids. 
So, and I do claim them. And 10 and a half, three quarters grandkids. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, Piper counts as a full one. So almost 11 grandkids. Um, and my relationship with my mom growing up, I went to boarding school all the way through. Um, so didn't really know my mom. My mom didn't really know me. Um, at this point, I'm working on it. So hasn't been easy, but I'm working on it. Cool, cool. Thanks for sharing and definitely excited to learn from you tonight. Um, mom, I'm going to stay with you here on this first question. And the first question, again, these are questions kind of written by our 910 community and written from the perspective of as a ninth grader and as a 10th grader, how do I do these things or how do I learn from this perspective? And so that's what we're looking for on that sharing from, from our moms today. But mom, starting with you, I think we all, we, we've all dealt with conflict with our moms before. And, and I'm just curious from your perspective, how, what do we feel like is the best way to handle conflict or to handle disagreements with our mom? Sometimes as freshmen, as sophomores, we struggle on when I disagree or when I want to push against, when I push back. How do I keep that from being a full-blown argument? How do I disagree well? How do I argue well? How do I fight well with my mom? I think it's a good idea to uh, take almost a thermometer reading of where your emotions are at. And if they're scalding or way high, you might want to take a beat or 10 and um, even ask for that. Just say, hey, this is escalating and I, I need to go cool down somewhere. Uh, you, your mom may have done that for you when you were littler, but you may need to ask for that. That's a good idea just to kind of if you're recognizing that you're getting really reactive, that you just calm down a little bit, your mom may need that too. So um, by giving some space, that, that can be helpful. And then I think get curious. Um, ask yourself and God, what's really going on in me right now? Um, as a ninth and 10th grader, what's really happening? And you're not alone to figure that out. Ask the Spirit of God. It, Hey God, what, what might be happening with me? Why am I getting so ticked off or worked up or, and, and see what the spirit of God might reveal to you. Um, but then you might get curious with your mom too. And when you go back to say, Hey mom, I want to understand your perspective. Um, and could I share mine? And if you can do that in a calm way, I think you'll find um, an openness begin to develop and an ability to talk well through even if you agree to disagree when it all comes down but still be able to be respectful and honoring um, that's really important and it will be a really important skill as you go on and start your own family someday so yeah that's so good Tracy can I come over to you for that same question um, uh, what I love about yeah, your ability to answer this question is, I, I want to hear it as a mom with your kids, but also in a pastoral position right now in a church, you work with families so much. And so when it comes yeah. to conflict with high school students, how, how do we do that well? Well, yeah, thanks. As a matter of fact, uh, Elizabeth, I love that answer because um, those were some things I had already thought about saying or those pieces of it. And I think on both sides, like I love to talk to moms and dads too, because I think on both sides, you know, if you really take the scripture that says in James 119, like be quick to hear, slow to speak and slow to become angry because anger doesn't produce the righteousness of God. If on both sides we can do that, we're gonna be far better off. And it really does have to do with listening. And um, none of us are very good listeners, certainly when everything's escalated because we wanna be heard, we want them to understand us. They, um, and so I think, I think the waiting, you know, really be quick to hear and slow to speak. And if that means walking away, I think that's one of the best things tool that I have had in my life of uh, conflict and during conflict is to really just take the time. You know, it's like decisions don't have to be made immediately. And, um, and then I would also say respect. I mean, you know, the, the word of God tells us over 
and over again that we are to honor our parents. Um, it doesn't mean you have to agree with your parents. It doesn't mean that you have to like what they decide. Um, but God really does tell us it, it's not a conditional piece. It's not if they say what you want or they make the decision that you want or they live the life that you think they should be living. It says honor your parents. And that is with respectful words and um, responses. And again, even if you have to walk away, I think that's a really good tool. Say it, communicate it. You know, I can't do this right now. I need time. I'm too, you know, this is too escalated, whatever it is. But I think the respect, the honor, and really just listening to each other and really encouraging your parents and asking your parents to do the same thing, your mom to do the same thing. Like, can you just hear me? I need you to hear me. I need you to hear my heart and my thoughts. And um, I think that'll go a long way. Tracy, we've covered this a couple of times now in this series, but how do I marry those two concepts of respect and walking away, right? I, I think about even when I was a ninth and 10th grader, I know my mom, my own mom could attest to this, but in the midst of conflict or disagreeing, the yeah. rolling of the eyes, the walking away, and I, I might even be able to, like if somebody was reading a script of what happened, I might be able to like, defend myself and go like, I did exactly what Tracy said. <laughs> I said, I said the words, hear me, I walked away, and yet I might have yeah. hurt that relationship more than I helped that relationship in that process. How do, how do I do that well? Yeah, I think that's an excellent question because you could, you could say I, I knocked off every one of those things and um, you didn't do it in a respectful manner. I think first of all is just communicating it like it, I, in a con, which is so difficult when it's escalated. It's easy for us to sit here today and be like, just be calm and just say it nicely because it doesn't. And oftentimes I think as well, parents get escalated and they aren't being respectful either. So I really want to acknowledge that. Um, I'm sure my girls would say there were times that I was very adamant and harsh with what I said and I, and then I had to come back and apologize. But um, I think, first of all, I, I loved how Elizabeth said too, which again is not easy, but really asking like, okay, Lord, I can't do this on my own. I can't do this. I don't want to be respectful. I don't like her right now. She's made me so angry. And I think asking the Holy Spirit to help us be better communicators and be respectful because um, we'll operate in our flesh every, every time unless we ask the Holy Spirit to really help us with that. And then I think... Um, you know, your example of, um, I walked away, maybe rolled my eyes and slammed my door. But I think if you can fully communicate, just, you know, again, just being in a more of a calm voice, probably maybe than you've ever done before, but just ask the good Lord to help you do it. But just like, hey, I, I really cannot do this right now. And you could even say the words like, I do not want to disrespect you. And I feel like if we keep going, I'm going to. So I need a break. Not in, a, not in a harsh tone, not in a yelling tone, but just like, hey, look, I don't want to be ugly to you, but I'm going to be if we keep going. So I need to take the break. And um, that just takes practice. And then if you don't do it well, I would say this to moms too, but if you don't do it well, there you get so many chips with your mom if you come back and say, I'm really sorry. I just biffed that. And for moms too, I would say the same thing to moms. It's like, we win with you guys when we say we can't, we, we didn't do it right. Mm -hmm. So I think just being super honest about where we are, where our heart is, where the hurt is, what we want and we intend to do. And even if you do something like roll your eyes, like, okay, I know I just rolled my eyes and I didn't mean to do it that way. Can I start again? Just just really owning. If we own stuff, it changes everything, it, especially when we're in the wrong, I think. It's like when we just say like, man, I really screwed that up and I want to, I want to do over. Can I? I think it, it makes all the difference. Yeah, that's so good. I love that not, not being above apologizing. And I think oh, yeah. man, with our parents, so often we are, right? We, we might even know we're in the wrong and we just go like, I don't want to go back. <laughs> I don't want to and I think at, at, at our, in our heart of hearts, most of us, we want that healthy relationship with mom. We want that healthy relationship with dad. And yet yep. so much of our pride is unwilling to go, I messed that up. I'm sorry. Mm, that's good. Yeah, Thank you. 
Yeah, because what the enemy wants you to think is that you've lost something if you go back and you apologize. Mm. He wants you to think that your parents will think less of you, you look like you're out of control, but it's just the opposite of those thoughts. You know, that's, I mean, that's the enemy wanting that that tension and that break between you because he knows you're better together. Um, so you're absolutely right. None of us in our own self, um, like to say we were wrong. None of us, Mm -hmm. you know, so. Um, Mary, I'm going to come over to you on this next one. Um, I, I would go out on a limb and say that moms are probably the most underappreciated group of people on planet earth. Um, and I think what, what made me realize that more than anything was watching my siblings parents and just watching like how much moms do for kids before they they can even understand what, how much has been done for them. And so I think there was, there's been a, a handful of moments in my life that I've gone back to my mom and been like, either I'm really sorry for fill in the blank or thank you for fill in the blank. And I think watching my sisters and my sister-in-law parent has been one of the most groundbreaking just the yeah one of the most things groundbreaking things i've witnessed is going holy look how much moms do for their kids whether it's diapers or meals cooked or complain 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 all day and i'm still here for you i'm still there to give you that back scratch or tuck you in or read you that story or they're just moms are superheroes and um, one of the questions that I love that got asked was, how do we, as sons and daughters of our moms, how do we make you feel appreciated? How do we make you feel loved? And I know that might be like a low-hanging fruit question, but I think it's an important one for us to ask our moms. Um, but maybe for you, Mary, representing all moms in this moment, how how do we love you as moms? How do we appreciate you more? Mm, that's a great question. Uh, for me, you know, I love it when they write little notes, whether it's, you know, for a Mother's Day card or even just spontaneous, a little note just saying what they like doing with me or what they appreciate about me. Those are always really sweet. I always cherish those. Um, if if they ever want to do something with me and hang out, that's like so cool. I'm like, yeah, you know, if they want to go shopping or go for a hike or to me, that just shows that, that they love me. Um, and even just saying thank you sometimes, just a simple, you know, hey, thanks for taking me to, you know, my friend's house or thanks for, you know, going out for dinner or whatever it might be. Um, just a simple thank you is always really nice. And even just if they came up and gave me a hug, you know, kind of that affection. So all those simple things that I think we all want, I think moms want too. Yeah. And what a powerful question to ask your mom, right? To go like, how cool would that be? If you, each one of our ninth and 10th graders here, and again, what I love about our community and our crew is they're not just here to sit and listen. Most of our students have pen and paper out going like, oh, I want to, I want to learn from this. I want to apply this wisdom, but to go, Hey mom, if nothing else, just at some point in the next week to go, Hey mom, how could I, how could I love you better? How could I make you feel more appreciated? I feel like that would be such a powerful question to ask. Um, Mom, I want to come back to you on this next question. uh, And I think it's a, it's an important question and, and it's one that you and I struggled with when I was in high school. But um, the question was worded like this. It said, uh, it seems like all my mom wants to do is fix me or control me. How do I go about having a conversation with her about that if I want to understand how she truly feels? And I felt like this was this was probably one of um, our biggest conflict points maybe. And um, maybe you would disagree. But even just little things of you asking like, Hey, how was your day? Sometimes would blow up into me going like, stop asking me so many questions. And a big part of that was my own just being a punk and my whatever I was dealing with in high school early on. And that was a big part of my apology to you coming back my freshman year, uh, between my freshman year and sophomore year of college. I'll never forget that walk that we had down to our favorite little ice cream shop down there in Ecuador and a long conversation of going, dang, I'm sorry for the moments I was just such a punk. But I think sometimes we have that perception as as high school students of like, my mom just wants to control me or she just wants to fix me and it's driving me crazy. Uh, maybe you can speak to that from a mom's perspective to go, hey, how do we how do we learn from you guys as moms to not get stuck in this, she's driving me crazy position? Um, it's very possible that as a mom, I can peg out and 
and go over to being too controlling. So I guess I just want to say that up front, that if, if you are feeling that, it would be a good idea, again, for you to kind of get quiet and think through some things yourself. But then you could just go to your mom and you could just ask that, hey, mom, could I share with you something that I'm feeling? Um, and I'd love, after I share, I'd love to hear your perspective on that. And, and begin a dialogue about that with your mom. It's possible that she's not aware that she's controlling or, or that she's coming across as controlling. It's, you know, there's intent and impact. And her intent is to protect, to love you well, um, to see you, um, to engage with you. But you can hit all of that wrong. <laughs> So uh, your timing can be off as a mom, or it can be too many questions too soon after they walk through the door. I mean, there's just a zillion things that can go wrong in there. So I think it's okay to bring that to the table, but you've got to be open as a ninth and 10th grader to hear what your mom might have to say too. Um, so I think controlling and fixing kind of, goes with being a mom and you can get yourself in trouble as a mom with that. And I, I would just want to say that, that it's not all you as a ninth and 10th grader. There'll be some combination in that mix that could be kind of toxic. And, but your mom is, it'll only get worse if you keep doing this. Whereas if you can calmly share, hey mom, this is what I'm feeling. And I would say one more thing, come not just with the problem, come with some solutions. What would you, what would feel better to you? So if you don't want to be asked, how was your day as you walk in, tell her it would really help me if I could go to my room and have 15 minutes or if I could eat a snack in silence or come with some solutions to, or ideas about what could help. Cool. Cool. Love it. Thanks mom. Um, Mary. Hey, Austin. Yeah, oh, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. go ahead. No, no, go for it. Were you going to lob that over to Mary? I just have a thought, but I can finish after Mary too. Well, get it. I was going to move on to the next question, but I want to hear your thoughts. Okay. Can I just, I, cause this one really uh, resonated with me as far as what I would, uh, I love that um, we can be controlling, but I think what I, I thought about when I was thinking about that question is if, if you could really grasp how, deep the love that a mom has for her children. And I think part of as you grow, certainly when you get to ninth and 10th grade, you're trying to spread your wings and you're trying to be independent and make decisions and you're thinking about your future. And here's what your mom knows. Your mom knows that the world is big and that the enemy is out to steal, kill and destroy you and your future. And so that's scary. And so oftentimes in fear, we as moms don't respond well necessarily. I, I would love for you to just see it sometimes and, and have the open conversation. I fully, fully believe that. But if you could just stop for a second and think, okay, that's not directed to me. That's my mom's afraid because I've asked to, or I've decided I'm gonna go do X, Y, and Z. And truly it's out of this protective mode oftentimes that we do tend to, we can overreact um, and be controlling is what that feels like. But it really is out of this deep love that we have done much like Austin said, it's like we've worked ourselves weary just getting you to ninth and 10th grade in a healthy manner. And we want you to continue and have the best life you can. And we know the enemy doesn't want that. And the world is crazy. And if you don't stay on the street now, do you see what I'm saying? It's like for a mom, it's just some days it's overwhelming that we're going to have to let you go into that world. And so, um, Maybe if you can kind of see her perspective in that, it doesn't feel as controlling. It's like she's just wanting to protect you and help you through and navigate into a new world that is, is big and, and sometimes really scary and dangerous. So that's all. There you go. So good. So good. I'm glad you interrupted me. Um, Mary, you, you have a son who I got to hang out with this morning, actually. 
and I love Jimmy and a lot of uh, the 910 community knows Jimmy. At, speaking as a mom who has sons, how do you bond with your mom? And I love that this question came in. It said, oh, what? Chris Brown in the house. Wait, you got to hop over to speaker mode. You got to say something. <laughs> It's moms. It's moms. Okay. How do you, how do you, do you we love you, moms, moms, even though a lot of times we don't act like it. We really, really do love you, moms. It's true. It's true. It's true. <laughs> Hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. Yeah. Thank what you. a pleasant surprise. <laughs> That's amazing. Mary, uh, you, you have a son, and I think the question came in, as a son, my, I have really different interests than my mom. How do I, as a son, bond with my mom? And I'm curious how that's uh, grown and maybe waned over the years. How do you do that with Jimmy? And how would you speak as a mom to a boy go, hey, here's how I want to be bonded with. Maybe that's kind of a weird way to put it. But I think sometimes sons, we go, how do I bond with my mom? We're so different. Yeah. Um, the, the, the nice thing about Jimmy is um, he's, a, he's a great kid and he likes he and I actually were on the, on the Enneagram, you know, scale for those of you that follow, know the Enneagram um, personality traits and such. He and I are the same numbers. And so we like to do the same things. He likes to hike. I like to hike. Um, he's really just, you know, into a lot of different things. I, um, I love podcasts. He loves podcasts. So we'll talk about that. Um, so if, um, you know, of course, I, I, at their age, they want to hang out with their friends. But any opportunity that I can to say, hey, let's go for a hike or, you know, he'll, he's usually willing to go with me. Um, and so he's just a really sweet boy. And I'm just really fortunate that he doesn't mind hanging out with his mom. So um, I guess finding those common things that you have, you know, that, that maybe you do have interests and, and working around those. Yeah. Um, I'm just pretty lucky that he likes to do, I, and, or that I like to do the kind of things that he likes to do too. Yeah, that's cool though. I, I I think that's that's awesome to find those things, right? And I, and I think maybe we can all find those things. It doesn't have to be we have everything in common. But how do you go? Okay, can we find something that we both do enjoy? Um, Mom, I'm curious for you to answer this question because Logan and I, me and my brother, um, we're similar in some ways, but we're very very different in a lot of other ways. And your and yet your mom to both of us and have a really good relationship with both of us. Um, maybe that wasn't always true, but how how did what did you do as a mom to two different boys who had different interests growing up um one a little more introverted one very extroverted and yet building a relationship with both of them what did that look like i think it looked like paying attention to what your interests were and then pursuing those so like one thing i could give a rip about baseball but i've learned a lot about baseball because you boys both like to play baseball. Um, that would be an example of something that I moved towards to learn about it. And I learned to enjoy it too. And nuances of the game and all that. You kind of moved away from that a little bit more and started some other things like surfing. And I've gone with you and watched you and asked you probably more questions than you want to answer about. <laughs> but that's a way that it's something that's interesting to you. And the way that I show you and I can get interested in it too. I can read, I can look at some pictures and videos about it. And I, I don't know, I've just looked at what you're interested in. And then I've tried to, and you know, Mary brought up the Enneagram that works for me <laughs> it, with my core style because I love learning. So um, that's enjoyable for me, but just paying attention to the different things that you are interested in and then kind of joining you in those interests. Yeah, that's um, cool. And, and I think we can reverse that too, right? To go, yes. if we as sons and, and if we as daughters want to be loving our moms and appreciating them, how do we take an interest in some of the things that they find interesting, right? And, and ask those questions. I think that's so important. I think just one other thing I was going to say with that, I think sometimes when I've moved towards um, you guys, and, I, and I've wanted to learn something, for example, that would allow us to enjoy something together. It's easy for you as ninth and 10th graders to go, oh, it's super easy, no big deal. Fabulous, it's easy for you. <laughs> but if, if your mom is asking to learn something, instead of saying, oh, it's super easy and just kind of brushing it off, take 10 seconds or, or 15 minutes and sit down beside her and walk her through it till she feels comfortable. Like if it's she's learning a video game or whatever it might be, uh, something on the computer, 
just instead of saying, oh, it's super easy and kind of brushing it off, just take a beat and help her learn whatever it is that would allow you then to enjoy something together. That one was a little too close to home, mom. So we're going to move on. Okay. Moving on to the very next question. Um, just kidding. Um, I'm going to come over to you, Mary, on this one, and then I'm coming to you, Tracy. Um, how, how do we help with our siblings in a way that's beneficial? I know sometimes uh, when there are multiple kids in the house, we can be hurtful and kind of play like second mom um, or second dad. And it's actually really hurtful, not helpful. But from a mom's perspective, how do I as a son or I as a daughter, how do I help out with my siblings? What can I be doing that's beneficial around the house? Mm -hmm. Are you talking about like in terms of their relationship together? I don't know if I totally understand the question. Yeah, yeah. So like when it comes to, I, I think uh, as a sibling, right, we can play like second fiddle almost and be like another mom. And sometimes that's more hurtful than helpful. And you're like, okay, like, let me be the mom, right? But I think there are things that we can do as siblings that moms can go, wow, that's actually really helpful. Thank you. And, and that can be relational, that can be actual tangible things. But what can I do as a son? What can I do as a daughter to help my mom be a mom and help her with my siblings rather than be hurtful with my siblings? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so actually one thing that comes to mind, um, Jimmy is older and he's really good at reading uh, Jay and I, his mom and dad. And um, so he knows, and he also really knows how to approach us. He's got a really, really high like EQ. So there's, there's been many times where he's kind of guided and kind of counseled Lizzie, our daughter on how to approach us. And so that's, there've been times where I've even heard him like off in the corner whispering like, Hey, this is how you need to talk to mom and dad, or this is how you need to approach a subject. So if you have, um, if you've got a kiddo like that, that really knows how to work, not, and I don't mean like that he's not working at us, but he's just really knows like, Hey, this is a good time to approach them. This is a bad time to approach them. Um, and, and maybe how to, he kind of knows what works in terms of, you know, we, we want the details, you know, details are always important, you know, make sure you provide those to mom and dad. Um, so he's really good at helping her communicate with us. Um, and then, it just uh, in other times though, as you said, he can definitely be sort of the parent and kind of boss her around. And so when that happens, you know, we just kind of quickly try to step in and tell him to back off <laughs> and chill out and let us handle it. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Tracy, how would you answer that one with two daughters? Um, I think with, um, with, especially with my two daughters, and I think daughters are, are different. It's, um, I've really encouraged them to, instead of see all the differences and all the, you know, the pain in the neck that they are to each other, but to really cheer each other on and really how they speak to each other and how they, um, encourage one another. And, um, so as a mom, for sure, but it's like, you want the, the younger one is going to look up to the older one, regardless of the gender. And, um, I really expected the older one to be like, Hey, she's watching you. So watching you and how you respond to us, watching you and how you respond to the world, to your friends, all of those things. And so, and then just really caring for each other. And, um, you know, sometimes people will be like, Oh, it's just sibling rivalry. They'll get over it. And, um, I just have never been a real um, champion of that. It's like, no, it's in our home that we learn how to love each other. We learn how to do conflict resolution. We learn how to cheer each other on. We learn how to be encouragers. And so that's a real expectation in our home. Um, even with friends, like I would always, you know, kind of intervene if I heard people getting ugly and just like, hey, you know, we're not going to talk to each other like that. It was just, it's an expectation because I feel like in our homes, that's where we learn to either do it well or not. And so I think your moms would absolutely appreciate whether it's an older sibling or a younger sibling of really just um, really letting that be a training ground and you be a role model for those that are there and um, how you respond to them. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome, Tracy. Thanks. Hey, just as, as we wrap up here, I would love to hear from each one of you as we close 
um, in no particular order, but if you could kind of give us a 60 to 90 second, man, if I could say anything to ninth and 10th graders who have moms out there, and, and I, I really think even on this Zoom calls, we have about 63, 64 people on here with the doubles, we kind of represent the full gamut, right? Like there's, we have divorced parents, we have single moms, um, we have people who are really estranged from their moms and people who have really, really close knit relationships with their moms. And so uh, maybe it's a difficult task, but in, in 60 to 90 seconds, if you could speak to a nine ten community, um, and, and this is recorded and it'll be posted on our YouTube. So we, we always get views on this afterwards too of, man, this is my heart as a mom for, for students and for kids with their moms. What would that piece of wisdom be? What would that piece of advice be to go as a mom? Here's what I want you to hear. Hey, I'm going to go just um, because I just got my low battery thing. So in case I check out, um, right. I'm going to go first. Um, I think what I want my girls, even just recently I had a conversation with them and they're both, um, over, you know, 20 and above now. It's like, you know, please know, even if your parent is just really struggling as a parent and as a person, and then maybe they don't even know Jesus, it's like, God has wired us as moms to be moms, and we're all doing the best we can. We're trying hard. Our heart as a mom, it's just how we're wired, is for you to be successful. And if we're going to mess it up. We're not going to get it right. But I think, again, it's that perspective of like, okay, well, that didn't go how I wanted, but I'm going to trust that she's doing the best she can because some of us didn't have great role models as moms. So we don't even know how to be a mom when we become a mom or um, our parents weren't Jesus followers. And so we don't know what that looks like. So your mom's trying and doing the very best she can. And um, again, it's just that perspective of really kind of stopping and thinking like, okay, I'm going to trust that I'm going to trust her heart, even though it went kind of sideways and I'm going to keep getting back up and trying to love my mom and really work on it takes work on both sides of the relationship, but she really does love you. I, I can promise you, she loves you with her whole heart and is, is cheering you on and doing the very best she can. Thanks Tracy. And just in case yeah. your battery does die. Um, thank you so much for being on here tonight. <laughs> We really do appreciate you, and we always love uh, with Tracy Moss, so thank you. Uh, thanks so much. I love what you guys are doing. Love getting to be a part of it. Thanks, Tracy. All right, Elizabeth and Mary, same, same question. If you could share wisdom, what, what would that be? Okay, I'll go. Um, I really I kind of want to tag on what Tracy was saying. Um, we love the kids so much and we make mistakes and we're not perfect by any means. And so just simply to have patience with us sometimes. Um, we're also learning through each phase that the kids go through and um, just we ask for patience and grace just as, as we all need it. Um, that's it. Yeah. So good. Thank you, Mary. Those were both things that I was going to say. Um, the same, you know, we don't come with a manual either. And so we're learning. So we need patience and grace. Absolutely. Um, maybe just, and this might be really hard as a ninth and 10th grader, but I learned this to not judge somebody before you've walked a mile in their shoes, kind of that principle. And um, maybe just, see what you, if you could try it on for a day or what would it be like if I was um, see what that would do uh, I, I've tried on lots of things that I've never been able to do just tried to imagine what it would be like to do that and it's helped me back away from being judgmental and critical um, and God in his word tells us not to and so that instruction isn't given if based on what the other person is doing. So you're really being commanded not to be judgmental and critical, period. So that's what you can do as a ninth and 10th grader. And I would just say as a mom, I sure need that grace and, and forgiveness because I am gonna mess up. I still mess up. And um, so, yeah. Awesome. 
Awesome. Thanks, Mama. Um, man, Tracy, Mary, Mom, from the bottom of my heart, from our 910 community, thank you guys so much for being with us tonight. Um, I know I gleaned a lot from this. I learned a lot, and our I love that our chat bar on the right always blows up at the end of calls with our students just going, hey, thank you so much. Thanks for teaching us. Thanks for sharing our wisdom. I know you could have been a million other places tonight. And so thank you for taking 45 minutes and spending it with us and, and teaching and sharing your wisdom. So we appreciate you guys. Attend. Again, like always, this will be posted online. Um, and so if you have a friend or show it to your mom or whatever, uh, it'll be on our website tomorrow. So we love you guys a lot. Thanks for being with us. Uh, we'll see you this week. Thanks Wednesday. so much, you guys. And then Thanks. next Wednesday, in-person fuel. So, all righty. Great. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone.